Welcome back. So the policy countdown is on. It's extremely quiet before that in the markets. So uh, if you're taking a look at the screen, then you've got still what about 70, 80 point cut on the on the Nifty. My cap index is feeling the heat a little more. Uh, should just point out once again some of the movers and shakers. So tech stocks, as we mentioned, then there's a name like Arvind. Arvind is back on the move. It's almost at that 110 sort of a level when the the demerger happened and this entity listed. It was around these levels, so it's trading around that mark once again. Uh, and Edelweiss financial, even yesterday there was a 5% circuit on the stock. And once again, Edelweiss is on the move in an otherwise very quiet kind of a market. Okay, so what lies ahead? Let's get that conversation going. We have Girish Pai, Head of Research at Nerunbang Institutional Equities. Girish, uh, thanks for joining in. So we've already had a very heady November. The question is, is has the hangover already be begun in December instead of January? I think that's what uh, people are wondering. Lots of events lined up. How do you see the next few weeks playing out? Uh, see, uh, obviously, uh, 2018 has been 18 has been fairly volatile, but uh, I think this is the par for the course kind of a situation for equity as equity is an asset class because if you look back in uh, 2016 and 2017, we had a fairly unnatural situation where volatility was very low. Uh, I think what we're seeing now in terms of the fairly high uh, level of volatility is natural. If you look back in history. Uh, in the 2003 to 2007 or 2008 kind of a bull market, every year you had a 15, 20 percent uh, corrections, like two, three of them. Uh, so I think uh, if you look forward, I think the key thing to watch out for is global macro. Uh, how, uh, how much of a tightening we'll see in the U.S., uh, how much of tightening we're going to see from ECB and Bank of, J Bank of Japan going forward. I think uh, Indian macro is reasonably okay. I think we will probably see GDP growth come off uh, in the second half of FI19. We'll probably see uh, lower rates going forward. Uh, earnings should pick up. But I think uh, the big thing to watch out for is global macro. I think that is where the risks are going to emanate from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you're referring to uh, slowdown across uh, global growth slowdown? Yeah, so I think that's probably uh, on the cards. I mean, we've had a, a global expansion for about nine, ten years since the global financial crisis. And uh, what we've seen in 2018 from a U.S. growth perspective is the is a fiscal uh, expansion that's been driven by tax cuts by uh, the Trump administration. Otherwise, my sense is we would have probably gone into a slowdown even in 2018. So we're actually seeing signs of that. I mean, uh, people talk of inversion of field curves between three three-year uh, 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 you know, G6 and five-year G6. So I think uh, it's on the cards, and my sense is that uh, there is no going to, I don't think there's going to be stimulus in 2019 in the U.S. Um, my sense is probably going to come off to maybe like two, two and a half percent kind of levels, and probably further down the road, it could probably stall. So that is there. Uh, ECB is on the verge of kind of stopping its QE. Uh, Bank of Japan has been kind of withdrawing. Uh, we have a situation, uh, while Powell has come out and said that we are probably close to neutral rates, uh, the Fed balance sheet is being paid, and obviously the fiscal deficit in the U.S. actually expanded quite a bit. So uh, those are things that one needs to worry about. So I think from an equity standpoint, I think next two, three years could be fairly treacherous. Uh, so we need to get into stocks which we will be comfortable holding on for the next two to three year time frame mm. because there could be some fairly sharp corrections in the global equity market which could translate mm. into corrections mm. even in the Indian equities market. If uh, we're looking at a slowdown in the U.S. in 2019, why are people buying IT stocks again? So I mean, from, a, from, uh, from the peak, obviously, there was a fall, but then the rally resumed as well last couple of weeks. I think uh, a rally has been probably driven by the fact mm -hmm. that uh, rupee, which had been depreciating from about 64-odd uh, levels to went down to about 74, 75. And then again, there was a reversal closer to 70. We saw a bit of a, I would say, a breather there. It again started depreciating. So I think the worries on appreciation has kind of gone away. But otherwise, I think I would worry about uh, underlying uh, ro dollar revenue growth for the industry. Uh, IT services, my sense, is probably going to deliver you at best uh, single digit to uh, single digit growth in FI19. Uh, some analysts are kind of factoring in FI20, FI20 to be better than FI19. My sense, it's going to be probably going to be worse. And uh, we are saying that FI21, we could probably see an industry slowdown because we think that uh, slowdown in the sense a negative growth probably happening for the industry in FI21 because we think that U.S. growth is going to stall by then. Girish, just to go back to that point about, uh, you know, 
uh, correction the next couple of years could be treacherous is what you said uh, you, you know when uh, th there is a recession or there is a sudden shock to the system uh, capital goes back home which is right. the US but if it's a slowdown and things I mean uh, growth has been extremely strong it peaks off trails off uh, is it possible as many global banks and the reports have highlighted that money comes back to emerging markets so they're saying well, well developed markets will slow down but uh, emerging markets will uh, will get some of that flow possible uh, uh, I mean this uh, uh, you know uh, there is this uh, situation where um, this is something very similar to what the uh, same people are talking about in 2008 2009 my sense is probably uh, this kind of uh, locking of equity markets is probably going to be there if you saw if you saw what happened in 2009 2008 2009 when there was a fairly deep recession Indian uh, Indian markets also corrected my sense is we got to look at this as a situation which is extraordinary we've seen a, a fairly long time frame where uh, uh, you know liquidity has been fairly easy and there's been a QE that has happened so we've it's an extraordinary event in one sense and once we have an unwinding of that we really don't know how so you're actually talking about a shock to the system I there mean, could be a potential the system. there, yeah, there could potentially be a shock to the system which one needs to be wary of and that's why I would think that uh, Portfolio positioning has to be in extremely high quality stocks. One needs to be in stocks which are going to be there after this two to three year time frame, which are going to survive that and grow after that rather than being sure. in high, you know, low quality stocks. Some of these high quality stocks may look very expensive. Uh, there could be a P multiple compression, but uh, the survivability rate could be higher for them. So two to three year time frame is something one needs to really watch out for. Okay. Well, uh Final question then, yeah. where would you hide? I mean, if you're getting into a bit of a treacherous phase over the next one, two years, as you say. So I think it has to be high quality stocks across various sectors, uh, be it in financials, which is the largest weight in the uh, index. I think uh, high quality uh, retail financials, uh, high quality co corporate banks, which could be private uh, banks. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, poison go out of the system in terms of the NPAs. Uh, I think an ICICI bank and some of the others, uh, uh, private corporate banks could be good. Uh, consumers could be a good area to get into consumer staples, consumer discretionary, good area. Uh, yes, valuations look very uh, expensive right now, but you'll probably only see a PE multiple contraction. Uh, you can live through that. I mean, you can probably see the same PE multiples two, three years down the road when, when the markets come back up. So these are some of the areas that we would kind of want you to uh, put your money in. Okay, all right. And talk about quality. Right. Just one last question, sorry, Zurbi. Sure. Uh, Sun Pharma, does it make the cut for quality now or do you think it's uh, lost that tag? It's very difficult for me to make that call. I mean, right from what you've seen, you've been in the market a long time. You see something like this, an event like this, play out in front of you. Uh, what, what do you? What so do you I think make what's happened is that uh, Sun Pharma management has not come out and made uh, definite comments on some of these issues that have been raised, and I think uh, that th these questions will continue to linger in the minds of investors. And to that extent, the, the P multiple contraction that has happened will probably remain. That it, that situation will continue even going forward. So until uh, you have you know, uh, the, the uh, management come out and make very definitive statements on who these people were, to whom this money was lent to, and a whole lot of other things. I would think that uh, the P multiples will remain compressed. All okay. right. All right. Thanks, Yurish, very much for joining in. Let's see how this plays out for Sun Pharma and for the market over the next couple of weeks.